Hello folks, so we're going to have a go at uh, the lady with the dogs again. Um, that's the sort of sketch that I've done to work out um, how I'm going to paint. Uh, and I'm going to start off by just, just putting like the individual colours on with one tone and then adding a stronger tone. And then the third part of the painting would be adding these really dark tones to sort of tighten it up and make it more recognisable. So to start with the hat, so I've got some sap green with a bit of um, burnt sienna in and I'm just gonna, gonna whack that on. Just trying not to be too careful. I know we've spent a good bit of time getting these drawings right but this point we don't want to be too fussy and on this side of the heart I'm just going to drop in some yellow ochre into there and just pull it pull it together so that it mixes a bit let's push that across a little bit there that's good. And then with the yellow orca, so if I just, oh, that's a bit green, that. If I just pull <laughs> the yellow orca for the, you just see a bit of a hair there. And on that side as well. That's good. And then for the skin tone, I've got uh, alizarin crimson with, a, again, a bit of yellow ochre in it. Just going to be careful at the top because I don't want the green coming down into that. But I can allow it to touch the yellow at the side. Just the green's coming in there a bit, you see. So I write that. And then for the red, if I grab some cadmium red now, so for the first the first tone of this this big winter jacket that she's got on. They're crimson in it as well, I think. And again, just letting it touch there, letting it the colours all blend together. Trying to mimic the folds a little bit with the brush strokes if you can. The odd bit of white, little white gaps, they just give it a little bit of life to the painting. That's alright. Imagine the light's coming that way, so that's why I'm sort of leaving a little bit of uh, white on that side of, of this arm. Good, that's, that's alright for the first bit. I'm just going to wait because when I fill that jumper in and the legs, because the edges of this red still wet, you will get it creeping across. I don't know if you can see on that one there. It's, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's crept across there. And if you can control it a little bit by waiting till that's dry, um, and then you, you again, you, you're a bit more in control of what you're doing. Then uh, while that, that's still wet, I think I can put the gloves colour on. So the mittens, sorry, so. Just get 
some yellow oak and just just time it right and you'll get a little bit of blending that was a bit of green which wasn't intended but there you go no dramas Good. So I'll just wait now, pause the video while I wait and just then I can carry on with the next bit. All right, for the next bit then, so we'll do the jumper and I've used, for the dark colour, I've used Payne's Grey with a bit of crimson in it. Just gives it a bit of warmth. So if I just, just paint around the lady's chin there. Carefully. Maybe as it comes down, add a bit more, a bit more crimson into that mixture. Just so that it's warmer in the middle there. There's a bit more light getting to it. And then going back to Adding some more Payne's Grey to the mixture there. That's good. So I'll do the back leg first and that's that's going to be more of a just Payne's Grey mixture that one. And possibly going, adding ultramarine at the bottom there and just letting it blend and mixing on the paper as you, as you go down there. That's good. Now this front leg is sort of lifted so there's, there's a, it should be a bit paler on top there. So I've just weaken the mixture a little bit. And again, on the right hand side of the well, if we, if we just add a bit of blue to try and suggest the, um, the sort of material, the rubber material that it's that it's made from. Probably a bit wide that mark. That's not looking too bad. So I'll start adding a bit of shape and form to things. So with the hat, a bit of the, the green with a bit of blue mixed into it. And then the red. So just adding a, a stronger tone just to give it a bit of three dimensions.
good. Looking all right. So with the hair, so again, yellow walker, maybe a bit of burnt sienna in it this time. So just adding, showing that it's just going under a little bit there. There, a bit stronger burnt sienna. And then for the skin tone, I'm just going to make that cooler. So the crimson. There's a little bit of blue in it. It just sort of describes the the form and shape. A little bit cooler under there. Don't want to do too much because it's only a small painting, so just got a little bit of uh, that's alright. So that's the pen's grey mixture. Just adds some shape and, and shading going in off that jacket there. That's looking all right, that. So that was burnt sienna, just to add some shape to that. So I'll just make an even stronger shade colour for the skin. The crimson and the ultramarine. I'll just see if I can just... Got to be careful because only a small one. I don't want to do too much and make it too fussy. So I'm going to move on from that and add these stronger tones for the for the jacket. It's a bit wet that yeah.
I'm going to leave that because it needs to dry. Okay, so some darker, darker creases just to really define the folds in the jacket there. Not much. Make that a little bit redder just to bring it forward. That's it. That's all right. Good. That'll do that for the for the lady there. So moving on to the dogs, so the first one if we use burnt sienna. I'm just mixing that that shade colour in for the for the the side there and the limbs that are further away, and the the the, the cleaner, warmer colour to this bit. And for the dog at the back, I'll just use a bit of burnt umber for that one. Very simple, sort of sketchy strokes for this one as well. Oh, it looks like a squirrel there. It's a bit, I'm on a bit too far there. There we go. I'll do. So shaded colour again. Okay, so the dogs are the colours dry on that now. So just to to make it simpler, I'm just using the this colour we used to just sharpen it up and add the the recognisable details for the for the dog's features.
again we, it is quite fiddly this but it's it's just we don't want to be too fiddly just just knowing when we've got enough to give the impression of, of, of what we're after there So the eyes are looking a bit on the same level. So we just take some colour off that just to make it look a bit further away. So I've just adjusted that there. It was looking a little bit messy and a bit fussy. Um, so it's the burnt sienna, a bit of blue mixed in it to make it cooler. And then the dark is this uh, Payne's grey with, with a bit of crimson in it just to create that really sharp dark to give you the, the definition there, really. That's it. And then on the dog at the back, so... Same colour for the shade, but perhaps use a smaller brush for that. And it's just just a little simple strokes. that round a bit there there we go and then some little shadows across the, the snow with uh, ultramarine Just adjust the, the dog at the back a little bit. It's just got her, whoops, head butted in the camera there. There we go. That's it. Good. We got there eventually. It's touch and go for a bit during that, but eventually we, we've, we've managed it. Um, so that's it. Hopefully you can work through and, and you can finish your drawings off with some colour and, and let me know how you get on.